For many players, artifact farming is the most painful part of playing Genshin Impact. Getting a good set for your characters can be extremely challenging, and if you're not careful, you can waste days, weeks, or even months of resin. So let's talk about exactly how to farm artifacts to reduce pain, maximize your account, and maybe even have some fun. Welcome to Jello Impact, where we build and test every single character to help you decide who you want to wish for and build. As someone who has dedicated himself to the absolute insane task of building every single character in the game, I am absolutely obsessed with resin efficiency. And there is no make it or break it spot than artifact farming. But first things first, this video only applies to you if you're AR45 or above. If you're below that, just use what you have. Don't go out of your way to farm artifacts, but you're welcome to watch this through and prepare yourself mentally for when it comes because it can be really difficult to grab. It was definitely really difficult for me when I started. But once you are ready to dump your resin for your favorite character, the first question you have to ask is, where do you go? There are a lot of artifact domains in the game, and with 4.0, we are getting a brand new artifact set as, as well as a huge amount of new artifact additions to the strong box. And this changes things. The first thing you want to do is pick your two teams. Identify those eight characters that you're going to be focused on. Maybe you could pick up to 10 characters for some flexibility. And looking at all those characters, you want to note down the ones that absolutely need a specific set and the ones that can get away with multiple sets. For example, Ayaka needs her four-piece Blizzard Strayer set. There's just too many stats to ignore. Raiden will always need her emblem set. And someone like Yolan will prefer the emblem set. But in the meantime, she could get away with two-piece HP, two-piece emblem, two-piece noblesse, two-piece heart of death. Nahida will absolutely want Deepwood unless someone else is needing Deepwood. Pookie can get away with either Gilded Dreams or with Flowers of Paradise Lost or even two-piece, two-piece EM. So that's what you want to do. You want to go through all eight to ten characters that you have and determine the sets that they can use and the sets that are best in slot, but starting with the characters that absolutely need that set. So for example, it's non-negotiable that Raiden needs Emblem. So you want to go through, and let's, and let's say you want to build her first. So you want to go through the rest of your characters that you're building for your team and say, hey, can anyone else use Emblem? Can anyone else use Shimanawa? If you're building Raiden on a Hyper team or a double Electro team with Bennett Kazuha, then she'll be the only character on that team using Emblem. So it may be best for you to go to the strong box. But if you're building her for a national team and you're also building Sing Cho or Yalan and Zhang Ling, or maybe you've got some other characters that need Emblem on the other side, you may want to go to Emblem to get your artifacts and also use the strong box for emblem as well because that's so many more chances you have at getting good emblem pieces if you're also using someone like yoimiya or someone like hu tao that can be even more incentive because they can use the four piece shimanawa set even though i personally don't like the shimanawa set on hu tao if you're already farming for raiden and Singcho and Yalan, you're just gonna get cracked out Shimanawa's pieces. But that's not where you have to stop. If you're using someone like Raiden with Yalan, she can use a two-piece, two-piece attack very, very well. There's not the alternative sets such as Gilded Dreams or even the brand new two-piece artifact set. Although they might be slightly better for her, you're just gonna get such good two-piece, two-piece options that you're gonna want to use those instead. And so that's one really, really important way that you can maximize efficiency is by using the strong box smartly and farming for synergistic domains. In general, the best thing you could do is farm the Deepwood Gilded domain because if you're building a Hyper Bloom team or any Dendro team or a Nilu team, then it's just insane value for that team. I do want to talk about a couple misconceptions about the strong box. Some people say that it's a scam. Here's the thing. I realize that artifact XP is hard to come by and it is very valuable. So if you need to use some five star artifacts as XP, that's acceptable. However, eventually you'll get to a point when your first round of characters is getting done, or if you're just patient enough, you will have more XP than you will have good artifacts. I know it's hard to believe, but eventually those five-star artifacts are worth less to you as fodder and are worth much more at the chance of trading basically essentially for free. You're essentially trading three useless artifacts for a chance, a new chance at a good artifact. It's really, really, really good. On the topic of the most artifact efficient domains to farm, you may be wondering, 
are the new artifacts from that are being introduced in Fontaine, are they going to join the ranks of most efficient to farm? And I would say that it's probably not as universal, at least for now, as the Emblem of Severed Fates and the Deepwood Memories was. Deepwood Memories was amazing right off the gate. Emblem was also amazing right off the gate because it works so good with both Sing Cho and Yulan. Sorry, Yulan wasn't out yet because it works so good with Sing Cho and Zheng Ling, and it got even better when Raiden was released. And I have no doubt that these will be the best in slot artifact sets for multiple, multiple Fontaine characters. But looking at how good they are now, Flower of Life really, really jumps out at me. It is amazing for Fischl. It's shocking to me that they were giving a set that is so good for Fischl when Fischl is already such a good character. You can still run Fischl with two-piece, two-piece. That's what I do right now for efficiency. But this is a massive upgrade to her damage. And so if you're using Fischl in aggravate teams with Kaching or with Yaimiko or even with Raiden, Fischl is doing a huge percentage of the team's damage. And this set will take that even further. It's also a side grade to Albedo, a side grade for Yaimiko. And if I had to guess, it probably will be the Archon signature set. So you're probably pretty safe to go for it. Flower of Life, on the other hand, will almost definitely be Liney's best in slot, sorry Linny. The funny thing is it'll also be Zhao's best in slot if you're able to manage his crit rate properly. And I think those are the only two characters that it'll be the best at for now. Although the two piece is pretty decent as a stop gap for maybe someone like Yoimiya. So overall, it doesn't scream to me, you know, camp out in this domain forever, unless you're getting Linny or if you're building an aggravate team for Fischl. But I really, really prefer farming sets, especially if you're new, where both the sets can give you extreme value. But value really is subjective. Just like wishing for characters value is subjective, for artifact farming value is subjective. But the reality is you have so many choices now in the strong box. Even the husk is coming to the strong box. So you can really, really be afford to be extremely picky and farm only the actual artifact domains that give you the most value aka give you both artifacts that you can use really well so now you know where to farm but how do you know if you have an actual good artifact piece on your hand how do you know if a piece is not good recognizing when an artifact piece is good when it's not good, when it has potential, can help you not spend too long or too short in a specific domain, thereby wasting a ton of resin. So for the more beginners out there, the artifact breakdown of stats goes like this. Flowers are always HP. Feathers are always flat attack. Sands can be a huge variety. Most of the time you're gonna be shooting for HP or attack or defense or em or er it really depends on what stat that your character is going for you can't get crit you can't get elemental damage bonus all the stats are useful to someone but they're not useful to everyone but i tend to lock a good amount of my pieces if they have good substats the goblet is often the hardest piece to get it's the one that can be elemental damage bonus which is a very hard stat to get for your character for your characters and as such it's a really really valuable piece you also can't get elemental damage in any substats on any artifact piece and something also to note is if you have hp percent in the main stat up here you can't get hp percent in the substats down below same with the goblet if you're using a non elemental damage percent goblet like attack percent you can't get attack percent in the substats and the hat, you're generally gonna be going for crit rate or crit damage in the hat. But of course, some characters use HP, some use elemental mastery, some use different things, but you can't get ER, you can't get elemental damage bonus, but it's the only piece that can have a main stat of crit. And you're usually gonna want crit rate or crit damage, and you're gonna wanna see the other one in the substat. Because the main stat of the flower and the feather don't change, they're the ones that you can generally afford to be the most picky with in the substats. For most damaging type characters, crit rate and crit damage are the most valuable substats that you want to see, but you really shouldn't neglect any valuable substat. This HP percent is really good for Yelan because she scales with HP. This feather, although it doesn't look that great, it's actually a godlike piece for Zhang Ling because she can use the attack percent, the crit rate, and the EM, and there's only one wasted role in defense here. So you want to be on the lookout for what I call hero pieces. When you're first building up your account, you're just not going to have godlike pieces like this on every stat. It's just not going to happen. You're going to have to take some chances on piece like this, and sometimes they'll surprise you like with a piece like this. It doesn't take that much resin to try out an artifact. Take it to level four, 
take it to level eight. When you're first building out your characters, you want to stop leveling your artifacts at level 16 until you can get a reasonable set for all of your characters. The reason why is because level 16, level one to 16 takes about as much resources as 16 to 20. It's a lot of resources to go to 20 and you can get a really good idea of how good that artifact is going to be by the time it gets to level 16 because there's only one more roll left. You can afford to be a lot more picky for your flower and feather than you can for your sans goblet and hat. Sometimes you're gonna have to accept the fact that your goblet doesn't have that much crit value but at least it has some other useful stats, especially if it's on the set that your character is trying to use. To make the set, you only need four, and the fifth one can be an off piece. So oftentimes that off piece will be your elemental damage bonus goblet because it is very hard to get that piece on set. A lot of people like to judge the artifact quality by the crit value associated with that piece. To calculate crit value, you double the crit rate and add it to the crit damage. So this piece would be considered 26% crit value. It's actually not really very high. 25 to 30 is okay in terms of crit value. 30 to 40 is very good and 40 plus is really, really insane. My personal standards is I look for 35 plus on my flower and feather and I look for around 30 on my uh, on my sands and goblet. And I really just take what I can get with the mask because it is kind of a crapshoot because you can only have one crit substat. This is like godlike, but I have very, very few that are anywhere near that. But again, it's not all about the crit. All useful substats are useful. One thing you do want to look out for is having a reasonably close to a one to two ratio where crit damage, your total crit damage is twice your crit rate. You don't want a min max to make it exactly the same. You just want to have it reasonably close. You don't want to have 40 crit rate and 200 crit damage unless you're getting external buffs for crit rate. But you, you don't want to have 100 crit rate and 70 crit damage. You want it somewhere one to two. This happens to be very, very close to one to two. It does not need to be this close. It could be 70, 200. It could be 50, 120. It could be 60, 150. But you want to aim for somewhere kind of close. The other thing you really don't want to neglect is your energy recharge. If you don't have enough energy recharge, then you won't be able to use your burst. And on a burst focused character, that means you're going to be no doing no damage. So energy recharge is the most important stat until you get enough of it. I personally like to have a bit more than enough. So in case I miss a skill here and there, or I don't do my rotation perfectly, I still have a little bit of wiggle room. You also want to consider external buffs for your characters. So if you're using, if you're using a character with Bennett, you don't need as much attack. If you're using a character with Sucrose, you don't need as much EM because those characters provide buffs to those different stats. It's not that attack isn't useful at all when you're using Bennett, but it's more useful on, for example, an Ayaka team than it is on a Bennett team. You also want to take what you can get. I've been talking a lot about min-maxing artifact stats, but sometimes you can't choose what you can get. You just get what you get and you have to not get upset <laughs> and, just, and just do your best making the best of what you have. I also want to note that for some characters, they want completely different stats than others. So Kuki, she wants full elemental mastery on her on all of these three pieces. So do animal characters like Kazuha, and so do the hydro characters on Nilu Bloom team, except for Nilu, who of course wants her HP. For these characters, farming the artifacts is much, much easier. And if you're trying to beat the hardest content as fast as possible, it can be worth going for some of these characters that are much easier to build. And if you don't like farming artifacts, that can also be really helpful to get characters like Nilux, because as soon as you have some HP, 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 and I'm using a two-piece, two-piece of HP, you're done. As soon as you have that triple set of EM, you're done. So if you're someone who doesn't like farming artifacts, going for characters like this can be a lot easier. Yes, it's gonna be hard to get EM main stats on all three of these pieces, but one of them can be an off piece and it's not even close as hard as it is to balance substats because with these characters, you don't have to balance substats at all. It really doesn't matter what subsets you have. Next, I wanna talk a bit about artifact standards. How do you know when you're done building a character? And it really depends on you. First of all, like we talked about, you wanna have that energy recharge. And then I personally look for a certain artifact quality for crit rate for my damage focus builds. For me, it's kind of 200, 210 plus crit total crit value from all of my artifacts added together. Plus having some other stats that I need if I have more 
attack percent or more elemental mastery subsets or useful subsets on my artifacts then i'll lower my crit standards a bit but generally i look for 200 for my favorite characters i go as high as possible my art my raiden is my best built character or maybe it's my ayaka she has a ridiculous ridiculous build because they're my favorites and i vertically invest in them and i spend a lot of time in those domains or using those strong boxes to get good pieces for them but i didn't do it all in one go i didn't just go in there and stay in there until i had you know those crazy builds i went in there i got a reasonably good enough build i would say my sing show is a good example of a reasonably good enough build who's got a 60 120 crit ratio this is a very average acceptable build if we double the crit rate that's 108 plus this we're at 100 and we're at 181 crit value total that's the kind of stats that i would first aim for if you're brand new to artifact farm is for your best characters get a aim for around 180 crit value maybe even less if you're taking your artifacts to 16 you can also go for less if you have a crit weapon such as a black sword or something like that that gives you crit rate you don't have to have as much crit rate on your substats you can go for more attack or other useful substats and so kind of for your first round you have lower standards get all your characters with decent artifacts and then you can go back to your favorite domains your favorite characters and start min-maxing them more, bringing up that crit value, upgrading those pieces, handing off old pieces. And that's the best part about really planning your account this way, is once you get upgrades for one character, that old artifact can be either fed as a new piece and you get your artifact XP back. So that's another reason why it's worth it to level up those hero artifacts because you don't lose all that much XP for feeding it into a new one. But if it's a pretty decent piece, it can be a hand-me-down piece for another character. So knowing what your standards are can prevent you from over-farming or prevent you from under-farming. In my mindset, when I'm going for artifacts, I don't really worry about each individual piece. Of course, it's very disappointing when a piece doesn't get doesn't go max and doesn't you know roll properly it's very frustrating when it should roll well but it doesn't but i just pretend i'm doing the run just for the artifact xp and the five star artifact is just a bonus and when i finally get a good one then it feels that much better finally i hear a lot of talk about if you should use your fragile resin artifacts don't use your fragile resin artifacts resin is resin so if you need better artifacts then you can use your fragile resin artifacts some people feel like you know they've wasted their fragile resin if they use it and didn't get anything good it's not true, right? You're gonna be, as long as you're using your resin every day, that's the only way you cannot waste, you can waste resin is by not using your daily resin. So using your fragile resin artifacts, as long as your past era 45 is fine, resin is resin. If you need to use it, then you should use it. If you're having characters to build, then you should build your characters. There's no, please consider subscribing. Channel is hugely growing right now. Thanks to you. It's really, really exciting. It's helping support my family as we're going full time and subscribing helps me out a lot. If you want, you can check out our discord. It's in the description. You can check out my Patreon, but if you don't want to do any of those things, that is totally fine. Just watching the video has been more than enough. I highly recommend checking out my full character guide. It's really, really good and useful and it's a perfect pair for this video. So definitely check it out and bye for now.